Sports from Seoul, Korea, and welcome to the GSL Code S. How are you doing today, man? I am fantastic, Tasteless. Why is that? Well, because he's Young Hwa and Nesty made it into Code e Sports is great. Yeah. Young Hwa. Yeah, I don't even care Finally. about today's group. I just, I'm like, Young Hwa made it in. <laughs> I just walk out of here. <laughs> it's Young about Hwa. time, Tasteless. If you guys are not familiar with Young Hwa, I mean, this guy was like, Legendary a long time ago, but was never in. He's still legendary, Tasis. Codex. He's even more legendary. Well, the legend now, continues to Now grow. he's relevant and legendary, so that's. Basically, uh, he's one of the greatest Protosses in yeah. the world for since forever, basically. Never been able to make it through the qualifiers. He's in finally in Dakota, which means he will be in Code S next season. It's huge. There's just no way to stop this guy. Well,. I don't want to say Code is easier than Code S, but at least it's like you have to swim through less crap to and get through it. The only way he's not making the Code S is losing that first round, Tasteless. That's and that can't happen. It it's can't, all it over. If the Young Hawk can prepare there. for you, you're dead. <laughs> so we're gonna have another staple Protoss that's always making top eights and stuff in GSL Code S. I'm so excited. I'm excited about because it. he's got a very. Um, he's the smartest Protoss. Yeah. yeah, he's he's super. I just brainy. fill out your mouth with yeah, everything you're like trying to talk. You I'm like, no, talk no. For me. don't worry about it. You're really excited because. <laughs> Young Hwa's the best, and he's so cool to watch. He is. I love it. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be good because we have another Protoss pillar then if he does get into Code S. So we're in the round of 16 now, and this is an interesting round of 16 because of the number of Zergs that managed to get through the group. Eight. Half of the round of 16, and those are Symbol, Sulky, Curious, Hyun, DRG, Sniper, Leenok, and Life. And then, of course, we have six Terrans, Polt, Hack, Yoda, Marine King, Innovation, Ryung, and then, I mean, that's Terrence, and uh, two Protoss, Parting and Creator. I really uh, hope a Protoss gets through. I think Parting and Creator are the Protosses who should and could do it, but... Yeah, I think that both these I guys mean, are going to make it in the next round, to be the, honest. The number of, of Zergs that we have that are terrifying... By the way, we got a Protoss today, too. The number of Zergs that we have that are absolutely terrifying that, could, terrifying that could be in the finals, even Sniper. Not that Sniper wasn't good, but even Sniper could get to the finals. That's, he could do that. He could. He could do that. He's actually really good, man. Yeah. He's like a solid, solid Zerg. He absolutely is. So we'll see what happens. I like the change, though, because we've had so many Terrans before. We saw um, a good amount of Terrans. Here's least. some more data for you guys on yeah. the history of um, you know the, the, the makeup. Yeah. These are our wise. seasons this year and, of course, uh, the season last year. Notice how Terran always been staying very steady in... Uh, in the Code S. Yep. And that one season where Zerg really dipped down to just two. Oh my god, that's gross. In the round of 16. Look at that. Seven Protoss and seven Terran that season. It's insane. And then, of course, we have Protoss taking the big dip right now. Yeah, if you notice, Protoss had a brief bump up, but other than that, it's been overall consistent until this season. Yeah. Down yeah, to two. The, the real consistent but, you know, one, though, I, is Terran. I mean, they've yeah, only oh, fluctuated oh, from eight to six. Same with StarCraft 1. Just Terran's fact kind that, of a... Yeah. Across the board. Yeah, Terran is like consistent. a... It's a solid race. Yeah, yeah. If you play it well, you're going to do well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's also interesting to see if you notice the steady rise of Zerg. Yeah. Three, three, two, four, true. five, eight. I can read. Yeah, that's you, right. you definitely can. I definitely know the numbers. Well, you can't read, but yeah, you know your numbers. <laughs> I can't. Even numbers are just shapes. If it's letters, I'm screwed. Yeah. Now, um... You just know that Zerg should way, be purple. <laughs> it it's could be shorter than the other words. Purple color. <laughs> By the way, um, I uh, casted the League of Legends finals for the IPL How was qualifiers. That? It was great. Yeah? It was great. I am a noob. I don't know League of Legends. I was doing it as a favor for Gong. Who, who played? It was a Zubu Blaze uh, versus Nodge and Shield. So uh, a fire versus a shield. Uh, I think the fire normally wins that. The fire normally wins. You can go like that and try to protect yourself. Yeah, but, but it's it's a blaze. <laughs> it's not just like a small. That's fire. true. Yeah. So who did win? Uh, blaze won. Blaze actually dominated. Blaze was just like they murdered them. Well, what do you, I mean, I mean, that's why firefighters don't carry shields. It was like they were playing like round one. It's like they're playing conservatively at the start, and like nobody's really killing each other. And then like once they get to the point where they're moving around in groups, every battle, I swear to God, Blaze is just. Manhandling them. Cool. So you should check that out. Yeah. Uh, if not for the games, then for uh, the ridiculous outfit that they made me wear. <laughs> you get your. Ass I have a picture of that on my my iPhones. You my get background. your ass kicked wearing stuff like that. That's what happens when Tasteless has three days before I know he's going to go on a new show. Um, but it was great. Andy did a good job, and uh, expect good things in the future from from Gom TV. Yeah. And we saw right there, real quickly, the groups. Uh, we do have one Forzer group. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, That's I know. Kind of exciting. That'll be our first Forzer group, right? 
I don't want to say yes to that. I no, think, I think one right. time we may have had four Zergs in a group. I don't think so, dude. I think that's extra versus a group. I don't know. Someone will tweet us and tell us. Tweet us. Someone us out know. there knows that for I'm some reason. Call me tasteless, and uh, he is artosis. So add us on Twitter. Uh, today we got some very exciting matches, um, and I can't, I can't wait to see the outcomes for today. I know a Zerg will probably get through, but you never know. DRG creator Uyung and Furious. All right, taking a closer look. DRG, one of the best Zergs for a very long time. His skill has been in question, but he crushed through the last group. Rank second in the GSL. And of course, Creator, he is on a tear lately. Yeah, Did very well in WCS and the Team League. Yeah, uh, very young, but incredibly solid. We got Leung, the best positional player uh, yeah. in, in GSL Code S. Of course, just joined Axiom, Total Biscuits, new team. Had a hard time that last group, but did make it on second. Then but, Curious. Curious is so uh, good. I feel like he's been overshadowed by these other Zergs. Like I think you can never has. count him out. That's true. And I curious. feel like his play style is a bit more. I don't. I say generic, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I know what you mean. You I know? know what you mean. But I, I feel like curious. What What are your predictions for this group? Um, honestly, it's DRG and Curious. Oh, I see, I was going to say first place Nest T, second place uh, Young Hua, but uh, <laughs> to keep it with players actually in the group that showed up today, I'm going to go Creator and uh, Curious, actually, and I don't know what order, but I, I feel like it is time for Curious to break out of the round of 16. I'll be surprised if Leung gets out, but, um, you know, he's very good. You can never count I Leung think he's out. the underdog here, which is sure. weird to say, but... No, it is weird to say Leung's the underdog, but... I mean, this is how competitive Code S is nowadays. Uh, you got incredibly solid players uh, and a multitude of them. And our map, uh, map number one is going to be Daybreak. The loser picks the next map. Mm -hmm. And it uh, looks like the game is loading. So we're going to get into this. Artos, your predictions for this? Creator, 2-1. Creator, 2-1? Really? Yeah. I was going to go DRG, 2-1. Huh. Well. We aren't disagreeing that heavily. I, mean, I don't want to fight anymore. I just want to cast uh, StarCraft 2. No, this is going to be a this is going to be a blast. And guys, um, spread the word about the GSL. Our numbers are doing great, but keep spreading the word. I'm amazed at how many times when I go abroad, I meet people that actually, you know, follow the GSL, uh, and they've only been watching for a month or two. Yeah, it's insane. All right, it's time Let's for game number one between DRG and Creator here at the GSL. Vegas. Vegas. In the upper right, starting location, we have our Zerg legend, a GSL Code S champion. He is MVP Dunlegu. In the bottom left, we have our Protoss player, a very strong. We'll see if he's one of the Protosses that actually gets out, because we only have two left. He is... Creator Prime. Well, can, can you hear me okay audio-wise? Yeah. Okay, I, yeah. think, I think my audio is turned down in my headset. We'll get that figured out. Uh, that knob right there. There's the yellow one? Uh, try both of them. Here, hold on. Can you hear me all right? Okay, I can hear perfect. It. There you go. All right, I got it. Okay. <laughs> I was worried, actually, that... Tasis and Artosis hot fixing wires know, while man. trying to cast StarCraft 2. If I were to spill my water on this table, I think, you know, there would be an explosion for the amount of equipment that's actually at our feet. Would it be fair to say that we just jury-rigged this broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> are we jury-riggers, Tasis? We are. I'll take it. I feel cool all of a sudden. All right. <laughs> I guess, I, guess, <laughs> I guess we got our, our the word jury rig out of the cast today. Yeah. It's, I, I wanted to work that in today, Tasteless. It's national jury rig. Joa is here today in the studio. Yeah, yeah, it's with Monte Cristo. Yeah, Monte Cristo. Just got to Korea. Yeah. Welcome to Korea, Monte Cristo. He does not have 
uh, headsets into the studio so he doesn't know what we're talking about him. So we can say all sorts of terrible things if we want to about him. That's true. And uh, probably get away with it until somebody tweets about him. Now we have um, the Forge coming in here. Yeah, everything looks standard thus far. Yeah, I mean, sure. Uh, the, the interesting thing about these two matching up is they both have very defined styles. Sure. Uh, you know, DRG is a player that always goes through the three hatch. He's mixed in a little bit more cheese lately, which, which is I, good. I think he should have, yeah. Yeah, he has to. He really does. Uh, but expect him at least two of these games. In fact, if he cheeses one time today, I think that'll be about it. You know, that's maximum one cheese I'm looking at from him. So I think he's going to play pretty standard from here. But from creator... Uh, he has a few different really good openings. He's really good with starport openings, and he generally uh, tries to go up to a three-base timing attack. He isn't a Protoss that wants to play the Supreme late game with Mothership and stuff. He wants to, you know, You know, get... I feel like actually Korean style that Mothership is less used. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the it's... professional level. I feel like actually this is almost like uh, maybe you're a, a foreign StarCraft 2 player, and you're good, but... I think a lot of uh, foreign StarCraft II Protoss has just defaulted to Mothership, mm. you know? I totally see what you're saying, and here's the reason for that. Uh, to kill Zerg pre-Mothership, you have to be unbelievably sharp with all of your timings. Yeah, you cannot miss a beat. Yeah, you have to literally get your third Nexus at the right time, or, you, I mean, of course, you can I mean, do, like, an immortal. you absolutely have to get your third Nexus amongst yeah. all things at the right and time. and you have to have your upgrades actually hitting at the right time. You can't miss a beat with your macro. Sure. And I think that's why, because a lot of the build orders used uh, in the foreign scene aren't as refined as Korean builds. Whereas, sure. uh, you know, as far as Mothership play goes, if you're, like, a really good, really smart Zerg, you don't take too much damage throughout the game, you're going to know how to deal with that mothership. So I think that's why. Uh, but it's a good point you do bring up, Tasteless. Now, uh, you know, again, remember, guys, there's only two Protosses left in Code S. So, um... I have my fingers crossed for I really want to have the two Protosses get through. Mm -hmm. uh, simply because it's nice to have a balanced makeup here, yeah. racially. Yeah. And uh, we do have the Stargate going up. Not surprised at all to see that from him. Uh, and you know what I gotta say? I'm kind of expecting to see from him is a pretty greedy upgrade heavy three base. You know, get maybe up to one Void Ray, but definitely uh, at least four Phoenixes, maybe five. Do some harassment, get the Robo up, take the third base. I, I feel like that's that's a way that Creator plays a lot in this matchup, and. I feel like it might be one of the best ways to get into uh, mid mid late game, basically. Sure. Like pre mothership game. All right, so we have a Phoenix opening, not a Void Ray opening here with the Stargate, mm -hmm. which is becoming uh, more common. It's still uncommon, but it, it's becoming more um, yeah. seen nowadays. Yeah, it's kind of a weird way to say it, but that's that's what yeah, I think people get what I'm getting at here. Yeah. And, uh, well, DRG playing 100% standard here. Uh, you know, he's getting his Rorish Horn at a normal time. He's going up to the drone count that he wants to have, which is he's going to be right around 63 to sit at there for a little bit, figure out what's going on, and then proceed from there. He'll send out the Phoenixes at either 3 or 4. Should be at parked 4. Right now. Should definitely. We've seen some people go at 3, but I agree with you. Yeah. It be 4. Well, the, the 4 allows you to pick up a queen with one lift and kill it. And that's like the important number, you know. If you're if you're using two lifts on a queen with three phoenixes, it's it's kind of gross. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you have four, you can pick up and kill quickly. Yeah. Like you want to really queen maximize specifically. Your... Actually, I'm talking about it. Yeah. I mean, roaches too, but you don't. You have a very you know, limited amount of energy. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, the Phoenixes are moving out, and they're going on a nice path. Yeah, we got a lot of roaches coming here in 34 Zerli. Is he about to attack into uh, his opponent here? It looks like he is. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to put on see, some pressure. Anytime you see roaches moving across the map and nothing but lings being made, it usually means they're about to try to attack into their opponent. Mm -hmm. And this is this is actually a really smart thing for him to do. Hold on, though. We do have the Phoenixes hitting that third base and lifting up the queen, and he will be able to snipe that out very quickly. But the roaches are going for this counterattack. All right, the Phoenixes are moving up now, and they're not going to be able to help defend here. Now we have four sentries. He's got to force field perfectly here. Yeah, he is warping in some more cannons. He's got to be careful about that cybernetics core, because once that goes, it's going to be hard for him to remake the units he wants. Now he is making a void ray to help out as well, and that cybernetics core is, in fact, going to go down. A nice just snipe. now taken out. 
But now, uh, it looks like he's still making lings, but uh, I don't know. I think the attack's basically over. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Crater has killed off. Uh, I believe he killed two queens total. He killed several overlords, some drones. Uh, he lost one phoenix during all this, but I mean, his harassment was reasonable during that. And you know what? Losing the Cybernetic score, not the biggest deal in the whole world. Look at the supply right now. It's it's relatively even. Well, with Immortals coming out, I don't foresee this uh, anything else working right now. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about the Void Ray after Phoenix is here? This was just because he is showing some aggressive aggressive tendencies. Uh, to have that Voider out, you kind of put a clock on the Roaches and make them run away a bit. And right, that's sure. basically all he wants, because Creator is setting up for a third base. There's no, he's absolutely not going for any sort of timing all in off two base. So yeah, absolutely. It's really smart to get that Void Ray in this case. All right, so he's getting the Nexus now. Uh, as you said, Artosis is going to go for the third base. And, he, I mean, he's playing very strong here. This is very much creator style. He's playing, uh, he has a general guideline to go with, uh, harass with Stargate units, get upgrades, take the third base, go Colossus. And I this still is feel how like he likes Stargate to play. openings are still the best for standard meta. You know what I'm saying? I, I know exactly what you mean. You know? I, I, I mean, the Immortal All-Ins are super good, and Stargate can... I feel like eventually Immortal All-Ins are going to become less common. I feel like it's a trend. Eventually, versus... they have to get solved or the game's broken, basically. Yeah, exactly. Well, they have to get solved better than they are, because like, people have to start being able to beat Harding or the game is broken, basically. Or esports will die and go away forever. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. All right, we have a Colossus coming up now. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this is very Creator Prime-ish. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I don't feel like there's a lot of fanciness. I feel like it's... it's um, it's I don't, know, fa I don't know if fanciness is a word, but... Uh, it's, you know, it's a word with Creator Prime. It is. All right. <laughs> all right, well, uh, he might lose those. He's got to be careful with those queens. Oh, no, all four come out. Never mind. Like, just two queens. That's dangerous. That's Get out of here, DRG. What are you doing? All right, so... That's the second Overseer we've had in this base here. Yeah, he's really trying to keep an eye on exactly what's he's going on He's being here. a hawk right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Creator has set himself up pretty darn well so far, Tasteless. He's already got his 68 probes. He's continuing to produce probes, which is becoming a little bit more popular in the matchup, just because I think Protoss has realized that they're going to have to take a fourth while moving out a lot of the time. I, You know, if you look at um, the way RTS games work, changing kill here, if you look at the ways um, RTS games work, um, they always start out in metagames uh, with people one-basing. Yes. Then eventually two basing, then eventually three basing, mm -hmm. and um, you know it stays on three basing for a while, unless we minus Zerg. Zerg's always gonna get the fourth, but um, and then eventually when it gets even more figured out, you go to the fourth base and fifth base. Yeah, yeah. that's why if you look at statistically, our games are just longer than they were last year. Yeah, because people realize okay, in general, conservative play is better as long as you could occasionally mix in very aggressive play. Well said. Thank you. Well, Creator is getting ready for his move out. It's very interesting to know that he's getting charged before Blink. Would it be funny if uh, the Phoenix could pick up a Colossus? I guess that would be it funny. Would be huh? like, it would like, make no sense, but I guess you could make the Colossus out of commission. Imagine if you use like four Phoenixes and all of them use that, their energy at once, so it's 200 energy and four Phoenixes to lift it. <laughs> it's the most useless thing you can do, but you can do it. No. Oh, wow. Very quick for it. Oh, that's an interesting location, too. You never see Protoss really take this as their Well, I base. think this indicates it's going to be fairly defensive here. Yeah, I think he's trying to stay a little bit spread out and avoid these uh, situations where basically they defend their fourth and then push two centimeters to hit your fourth, you know? That's something we see a lot. And look at this. The Zealot flank. Very well done by Creator here, trapping a bunch of DRG's units. All right, destroying these roaches now. And he is focusing so heavy on Zeloths right now, Chase. This is kind of neat. Well, he's got to be careful. He has a good amount of investors, DRG. Yeah, does. that's true. It, but where are his spine crawlers? He really doesn't have those, does All he? All right, and we see an engagement here. Maxed out armies. Nice bungles. But uh, most of the Zealots not getting caught in that. Uh, we don't have a lot of spine crawlers here. I feel like DRG could be in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, uh, DRG definitely looks like he's in a lot of trouble, Tasteless. These Zealots dealing ridiculous amounts of damage so quickly. Some very nice fungals going down, but still, I mean, he needs to be able to kill this off before he loses this base, and it now, doesn't look like it's going to happen. He's not really able to keep the Stalkers alive. Um, I mean, excuse me, I mean the Corruptors alive. I don't know how to swap that. 
Um, but now closing in here on this base. Uh, and it, I, I don't know, man. I feel like Gear G might have just lost. Look at the supply count here, 125 yeah. to 167. Yeah, GG. Wow. That was convincing. I felt like we just really watched well. you guys build armies and then the game ended after an attack. Yeah, um, DRG actually, he had no real time to build spine crawlers in there. That was, it was kind of weird. Uh, it was. To be honest. I mean, I like... How, how long was that game? 17 minutes. 17, okay, it, just, it felt like short It, it yeah. for, for, for uh, four base, but... You know, guys, if you want to steal a build, that was a good build to steal there yeah, from that's Creator. Creator, and the thing is, he that's like a build he uses a lot, not necessarily the charge. He normally prefers Blink. That's a new thing, and actually a lot of Protosses have been playing with getting charge a lot quicker in the matchup recently, Vampire definitely being one of them. Right. And uh, it's, it's kind of neat, and it needs to develop a little bit more for me to explain it really well, because it's... It's this a weird tempo-y type of thing where you have, like, for instance, Zots deal damage quicker than Stalkers. There's yeah. not a question there. They have higher damage That's one of the reasons why output. they're were valuable. They were more valuable in StarCraft yeah. 1, I feel like, in a way. Um, but, yeah, um, they're, they're much better against... They deal against, damage quicker. They don't deal... Yeah, they, well, you yeah, it up. They're, they're much better uh, against things like Zerglings, which Protosses are... I mean, Zergs are relying on more and more against Protoss. Uh, it's it's really neat, and Creator did a great job there, just tweaking I'm, one of his his normal builds. I'm really curious to see if. Uh, oh, I was about to say I was really curious to see if he picked Whirlwind, but I guess he picked a uh, Bellsteer uh, Vestige. Yeah, or I'm not Vestige. surprised. I think it's Vestige. Yeah. We could, well, we could say Vestige if we wanted to. In another, I language. guess we could. We could. It's not wrong. We could call it Vestige. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, actually, I'm not surprised with Belshir Bell Vestige because I honestly feel like um, it's 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 a huge map. It's got a lot of bases. Yeah. Um, I do feel like late game Zerg can actually be it's it's easy in one way and hard in another. Mm. I think it's, uh, it's I think it's a better choice in World. You're, you're very spread spread out. I why because you that. could actually Broodlords are usable on this map. Whereas I look at Whirlwind, oh, I'm like, well uh, you're always going to be a base yeah. trader with Broodlords here. Well, I think it's why Whirlwind is a map that makes our games longer. Yeah. All right, guys, get ready as we enter into game number two. If DRG loses, this, he's in the losers group. Otherwise, we're going to the third game. I'm Tasty, me is Artosis, and this is the 